Cheese, one of the world's most ancient and beloved foods. From the smooth, creamy brie of France to the sharp, aged cheddar of England and the crumbly, pungent Roquefort, every cheese tells a story of tradition, technique, and patience. But how does fresh milk transform into the delicious cheese we love? Join us on an in-depth journey through the fascinating process of cheese making. It all begins with milk, the most crucial ingredient. Cheese can be made from cow, goat, sheep, or even buffalo milk, and each type brings distinct flavors and textures. The breed of the animal, its diet, and the region where it grazes all contribute to the cheese's final character. Some famous examples include Parmigiano-Reggiano, made from high-quality cow's milk in Italy, and Manchego, crafted from sheep's milk in Spain. To ensure safety and consistency, most commercial cheese making starts with pasteurization, where milk is heated to 72 degrees Celsius, 161 degrees Fahrenheit for 15 seconds to eliminate harmful bacteria. However, raw milk cheeses, such as traditional French Camembert and Swiss Gruyere, rely on natural microbial activity and must be aged for at least 60 days to ensure safety. Next, beneficial bacteria called starter cultures, are added to the milk. These cultures kickstart the fermentation process, breaking down lactose into lactic acid. This step is crucial because it affects the cheese's final taste, aroma, and texture. Different bacteria are used for different cheeses. Mesophilic bacteria, which thrive at 20 to 40 degrees Celsius, 68 to 104 degrees Fahrenheit, are used for cheeses like cheddar and gouda, while thermophilic bacteria, which work at higher temperatures, 37 to 55 degrees Celsius slash 98 to 131 degrees Fahrenheit, are essential for Swiss cheese and Parmesan. To turn the liquid milk into a solid, rennet is added. This enzyme, traditionally sourced from the stomach lining of young calves, but now also available from microbial and plant-based sources, causes milk proteins to bond together, forming curds. The milk is kept at 30 to 40 degrees Celsius, 86 to 104 degrees Fahrenheit, and allowed to coagulate for 30 minutes to 2 hours. Some cheeses, like ricotta and painter, skip rennet altogether and rely on acid from lemon juice or vinegar to form curds. Once the curd has set into a gel-like consistency, it is cut into smaller pieces using special knives or wire cutters. The size of these curds plays a crucial role in the cheese's moisture content. Larger curds result in softer cheeses, like brie, while smaller curds produce firmer cheeses, like Parmesan. At this stage, stirring and gentle heating help control the moisture level. For soft cheeses, the curds may be left at 30 to 40 degrees Celsius, 86 to 104 degrees Fahrenheit. While harder cheeses are heated to 45 to 55 degrees Celsius, 113 to 131 degrees Fahrenheit, to expel more whey. After the curds reach the right consistency, the whey, the liquid portion of the milk, is drained. However, the whey is not wasted. It can be used to make additional dairy products like ricotta or as an ingredient in protein powders and animal feed. Some cheeses, such as cheddar, go through a unique process called cheddaring where the curds are stacked and turned repeatedly to expel more moisture and develop their signature texture. Now salting. Salting is a crucial step in cheese making, not just for flavor, but also to control bacterial growth and moisture content. Some cheeses, like Parmesan and cheddar, are dry salted by sprinkling salt directly onto the curds, while others, such as feta and mozzarella, are submerged in a saltwater brine for several hours or even days. Blue cheeses, like Roquefort and Stilton, require special salting techniques to encourage the growth of blue mold, which gives them their characteristic veins and tangy flavor. Now, the curds are transferred into molds, which give the cheese its final shape. Soft cheeses require little to no pressing, while harder cheeses, like Gouda and Manchego, are placed under heavy pressure for several hours or even days to remove excess whey and create a dense texture. One of the most important stages in cheese making is aging, also known as a finage. Cheese is stored in carefully controlled environments, where temperature and humidity play a crucial role in developing its flavors and textures. Fresh cheeses like mozzarella and cottage cheese are ready to eat immediately, while semi-soft cheeses like Havarti and Gouda are aged for two to six months. 
Hard cheeses like Parmigiano-Reggiano, Con, and Pecorino can be aged for six months to several years. During aging, natural bacteria and molds interact with the cheese, breaking down fats and proteins to create complex flavors. In some cheeses, like Brie and Camembert, a white mold forms on the surface, giving them their soft, bloomy rind. Blue cheeses like Gorgonzola are injected with penicillium mold and aged in caves, where humidity helps the mold spread, creating their distinct marbled appearance.